Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to build on the previous video where we incorporated continuous integration with linting only. In this video, we're going to add testing with the PyTest package. Now you might want to ask, why would we want to incorporate testing in our continuous integration workflow? The reason being, it ensures existing functionality is not broken. When you write a test in PyTest, it's a test for a function that's already written. So if you have a function A that returns a certain output with a certain input, you would write a test with PyTest that ensures that functionality stays consistent. If another person makes a pull request into your repository and it breaks that existing functionality, then you know that it should not be merged into the main branch because it's breaking existing functionality. With PyTest, we can check that this exactly does not happen and also integrate this into our continuous integration workflow so it happens automatically. Before we get started, you can help me out a lot by doing a few simple things. Support me on either GitHub sponsors or on Patreon down here. Subscribing to the channel, liking this video and sharing it on platforms you use like Reddit, Discord, etc. Starting the repo on GitHub and also follow me on GitHub. All these things help me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is fork the repo. After you have it in your local GitHub profile, you go to code, copy, go to your terminal, and do git clone and paste the URL. And before we actually start walking through the code, I want to just walk through the directory structure to make sure we understand why things are structured the way they are. The first of all, we have is the main.py. This is going to have a few functions that we're going to be testing. We also have this temp folder that is main2.py. Again, just a few files we're going to be testing. You might ask, why do I have a temp folder? Why don't I just have a main and main2 at the top? It's because I'm trying to simulate what real world is going to be like the most. In the real world, you're not going to have all files in the top level directory. You're going to have multiple subdirectories. So I'm trying to give you exposure to both of those. We also have this requirements.txt file. Why do we have this? We click into it. We have two imports, pytest and mypy. The requirements.txt is necessary because we're running a container image for our GitHub action workflow. This means that we have to install these requirements necessary to be able to run the testing inside of a container image for our GitHub action workflow. We're going to see this more in depth and in more explanation when we walk through the GitHub workflow file. We also have this test directory. With PyTest, what it's looking for is a directory called test or test with an S at the end. If it doesn't find this, it won't be able to run the PyTest. So you must specify it this way. If we click into it, we also have test underscore main.py. Every file must be prepended with test in the file name. This is what PyTest is looking for to know this is a file that it must check for PyTest. And we also have the temp and test main2.py. Now you might be asking, why don't I just put test main2.py right here? Why did I create the temp directory inside of the test directory as well? Well, it probably doesn't make sense for just two files. You could just include them right here. Well, let's say we're in a real world project. We might have 50 files. We might have 30 plus subdirectories. It makes a lot more sense to follow the subdirectory structure of the top level directory so it can make it easier to understand where files are located and what's being tested. So you should always follow the same directory structure of your repository inside your test directory. And we click into test main.py. We see test add and test descendants. You must prepend every test with the keyword test as well. Just like you have to do with the file name and just like you have to do with the top level directory test. PyTest is very particular. Make sure you include the test in the top level directory name, the file name, and also the function name. And finally, we have this .github workflow file right here where we're going to run the continuous integration, both for linting with Flakegate, MyPy, and Isor, and finally testing with PyTest. All right, now that we have everything done, let's start actually walking through the code. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever you want. Let's take a look at the first file. We have main.py in the top level directory. This file just has a few simple functions add and two sentence. I'm not going to walk through the functionality because it's very basic and that's not the point of this video. We have this test main.py. Remember you must prepend the file name with test. And we have two functions. Again, must prepend with test. The way we're testing is we're using assert statements. What this is doing is it's calling the main.add. We imported main up here. We're calling the main.add function which is right here in the main.py. We're passing two inputs. So we're passing expected inputs and we're saying it must equal 7, the expected output. So we're asserting this statement must evaluate to true. 
If assert and this equals false, this will fail. So our pi test will fail. And we do the same thing down here with test descendants. We pass in an input and we have an expected output. We assert that this must be true. If it's not, pi test will fail. We go to main2.py in the temp folder. Again, we see two functions, sub and word count. And we see test main2.py in the test temp directory. And we see two functions again, test sub and test word count. Again, with expected input, expected output, and assert statements. We just put multiple assert statements, ensuring that all these must evaluate to true, otherwise the pi test will fail. It's that simple to add testing to your repository. Obviously, if you have more complex functions, these tests might be a little more complex, but this is the bare bones of how you can do it and how easy it is to incorporate it. All right, now let's move on to the requirements.txt file. We have two imports here, pytest and mypy. The GitHub action creates a container, which then installs Python inside that container, and then we must install the requirements inside of that container with Python already installed. Here being pytest, which we need to run the test in Python, and also mypy. Why are we installing mypy? We go to the main.py, we see that we have this right here. We're specifying the return type of the function. Python will actually fail and say this is an error unless you have mypy installed. So that's why we must install mypy here in the requirements.txt. And the final file we're going to walk through is the python app.yaml file. This is the continuous integration workflow file that is running automatically on the GitHub repo on push and pull requests. Now before we walk through the code, you might think this is very daunting. I don't understand how all this works and I'm not sure I can write this from scratch if I need to for my repositories. It's actually much simpler than you think it is. Let's go back to the GitHub repository. If you go to actions right here, you go to new workflow, you can scroll down and click Python application right here. This will create and test a Python application. This is exactly what I did when I first created this repo. I went to the actions tab, I clicked this workflow, it gave me boilerplate code that runs linting and runs pytest. I click start commit and I committed the file. If you commit the file, then you would have this file in the .github workflows folder and this file name. I just tweaked this to add more functionality to my desire, but it's this simple if you want to go as bare bones as you can to just start a workflow file and have it start running. So we can go back to code. Now let's actually walk through the workflow file that I used as a base template and also customize enhance for this video series. So we go back with the python app.yaml file in the .github workflows folder. First we give it a name, python application. You can call this whatever you want. CI workflow with python. Doesn't matter. On, we're going to push and pull requests on branches main. That means if we make a push request to main, or we make a pull request to main, then it will run the workflow. We also have this workflow dispatch, which allows us to manually run the workflow. Let's go back to the repo, actions, click the Python application. We can run the workflow manually if we want. And that's only because we specify workflow dispatch right here. Going on, we have our jobs and we're running on Ubuntu latest. Like we said before, the GitHub action creates a container. It's using Ubuntu as the base image. If you're familiar with Docker, this will make a lot of sense. If you're not familiar with Docker, don't be too concerned. We have our steps. First, we check out the code. This uses a GitHub action called checkout that just checks out the code to run our actions on. We're setting up Python and installing it in the container. We're using version 3.9. Then we install the dependencies. Again, we have the pytest and mypy, specified here in requirements.txt, pytest because we need to run the pytest, and mypy because we need it because we specify the return types of functions. Here we're upgrading pip first, then we're installing flake 8 and pytest, then we're checking if the requirements.txt file exists, then we install it. Now you might be asking why do we have pytest here and also in the requirements.txt. We have pytest here because it was in the boilerplate code. I just kept it because it was in the boilerplate, but this is redundant. Going on, we now have the linting here, and we also have the committing and pushing iSort changes. I went through all this in the previous video in very great depth. I'm not going to recover it here. If you're interested, refer to the previous video. And finally, we have the test with PyTest. 
we're checking if the test or test directory exists, then we'll run python-m pytest. Why is this important? Because if the test or test directory does not exist and we try to run python-m pytest, it will actually fail and give us an error. So if we're not trying to run tests on our repo, we don't want this part of the code to fail and cause issues with our CI workflow. That's why we have this if conditional first. And the dash m flag right here, I'm not going to cover in this video series, but if you're interested, you can Google very quickly and find out exactly why you use the dash m flag. All right, now let's actually run the GitHub workflow. So we go to main.py, we're going to introduce an intentional isort error. We're putting OS before math. This is an isort error. We're going to go to the terminal. We'll do git diff just to see our changes. There's our one change. We're going to do git add, git commit dash m, intentional I sort error and get push. We go back to the code, go to actions, we see it running, and we can click in. And let it run. Okay, the workflow completed. So we can step through. We built the action pylinter, which I covered in the previous video series. We checked out the code, we set up Python in the container, we installed the dependencies, we ran the linting, nothing failed, but we did have isort errors, but in our workflow file, we specified fail on isort to false, so we didn't actually fail on isort errors, even though they were there, but instead we committed and pushed those isort changes automatically to the repository, then we test with PyTest. We see it tested main.py and tested test main2.py, both pass, so we saw four pass. And then we did post checkout actions. And we can go back to the code. And we see right here, this isort right here, it was committed automatically to the repository in our GitHub action workflow. So it fixed the isort errors automatically. And just to verify that, we can go back to the terminal and do a git pull. And we see you pulled in those ISOR changes. All right, that's it for this video. If anything was confusing or you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I'll respond as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.